All right. Okay. So hello, dears. <laughs> Ayan. So hello, good day. Hi, hi. Kamusta kayo dyan? I hope you're all doing fine. All right. So welcome to another pre-recorded lecture in our class in clinical parasitology. No? And for this lecture, we're going to discuss now first. No, actually, this is like the first part of um, our activity for this week. Uh, yeah, this is the first part. So our first part is the gross or macroscopic macroscopic examination of your stool, all right? So before we process your stool samples, diba? So we had a, press, a separate discussion on that, no? the dif different stool samples, preservation, and all that. Uh, but once you have received no, the stool sample in the laboratory, before we start processing that, we then uh, first examine its physical characteristics, okay? Or its gross or macroscopic examination, okay? And that's important. All right, because we want to know, no, we want to dis describe how it looks physically. Okay, because that can help us, or that can already give us a presumptive, no, idea as to what the patient is experiencing in terms of the disease, no, in terms of the parasites that could also be found, uh, or that that are the, the parasites that are the cause. <laughs> yes, medyo naglag ako doon. The parasites that are the cause of the disease. All right, okay. Ayan. So again, this is the gross examination of your stool or your fecalysis. Diba? Fecalysis is the analysis of your feces. And fecalysis, it encompasses a lot of uh, testing in your stool. You have gross physical exam, microscopic, of course. And in the third year, in your clinical microscopy subject or AUBF, you will also discuss chemical testing of your stool, okay? Uh, by the different chemical substances found in your stool. All right. Ayan. So, again, this is a gross examination of stool. So, for the significance, your stool specimens, as mentioned, unpreserved or preserved, uh, they should be visually or grossly examined, again, to determine the color and consistency, as well as to screen the presence of blood, mucus, or visible parasites, and even foreign bodies. Because, again, diba, usually, if there is blood or mucus uh, present in your stool, then it could indicate that maybe the patient is having amoebiasis, example, because your amoebiasis uh, samples, usually they contain blood or mucus, all right? Parang ganun. And also visible parasites. As mentioned in our uh, lecture on stool specimens, diba? there are some parasites that can already be found on the stool mismo. Like you can see it already, okay? <laughs> With the naked eye. Ayan. And as mentioned, muni sila. These are the things that you can see. These are the parasites that you can see. You can see either tapeworm proglottids. Again, as mentioned, what is a proglottid? It's the body of the tapeworm, the individual body of a tapeworm. Diba? This is your tapeworm. This is the head, example. This is what you call a proglottid. So this is the proglottid. So again, um, macroscopic palang or gross palang. No? Uh, in the specimen palang, the stool specimen palang, pag open ni mo, you can, you can see this already, kaning proglottid. Okay, individual proglottids. Or even adult roundworms, especially Ascaris or Enterobius. Diba? So as mentioned, Ascaris, your giant intestinal roundworm. I've also shared my experience, diba? I think the experience of my friend <laughs> when we were under, yeah, when we're still studying parasitology in, in the third year. No, it's their experience, yes. There was a worm talaga na naka na, na appeal, no? That was included, <laughs> all right, in your specimen. So yes. And aside from that, I sorry. The gross examination, as mentioned, it can already be helpful in the presum presumptive diagnosis of several intestinal disorders. Again, as mentioned, because kani palang na color. Like if you see this color, ah, you can already have an idea as to what is the possible disease of the patient. Okay, like example, if you have bloody stool, ah, okay, that could indicate there's bleeding. If you have this color of stool, if you have this consistency of stool, then I can already know what type of parasites can be there. Okay, so that's the importance of your gross or physical uh, or macroscopic examination of your stool. All right, now we go first with some terminologies. Uh, bloody stool, ayan. When you say a stool that is bloody and the color is bright red, no, it indicates what part of the GIT is bleeding? The lower, yes, the lower GI tract and that is bleeding. Uh, bright red stool, okay? <laughs> Bloody stool with bright red uh, color that's termed as hematochezia. All right, so it indicates lower GIT bleeding because your blood is still fresh, okay? So lower GIT, example, rectum, no, sa, sa colon ba, dapet, mga sikom, ganun. So lower GIT building it, uh, bleeding, it means that the blood that was released is still fresh. 
Okay, it did not undergo any oxidation yet, no? Or it did not undergo any changes. That is why the bleeding is still, or the blood, or the color of the stool is bright red. Because again, the blood there hasn't undergone any changes in terms of oxidation ba, or in terms of changing to different colors, diba? So that's why bright red, lower GIT bleeding, and that is termed as hematochesia. All right, keys. Next is, we also have a dark-colored stool, okay? Usually uh, described as black, not black, tarry, okay? This tarry, ha? Char. Black, tarry, stool. Black. Black, tarry. So when you say tarry, parang tar, no? Basa-basa. It's wet, okay? And it looks like parang tar. It looks like tar. So it's like black, tar. Parang tar is like Di ba parang sa oil yan siya or sa gas, something like that. So, yun ang appearance. That's the appearance. So, it indicates upper GI bleeding. And that is termed as melina. Okay? Alright. Melina. So, why does it now become color black? So, if there's upper GIT bleeding, example, sa stomach, there's bleeding in the stomach. Like intense bleeding. So, what it does is, of course, can you imagine the blood will still under, under uh, will pass through the small intestine and then finally to the large intestine. So, it will... It, it still goes through a lot of areas in your uh, digestive tract. So what it does is the blood from your stomach will then undergo oxidation no? until it becomes a hematin, if I'm not mistaken, hematin, which now gives it a black or dark color. All right? Because again, the blood from your upper GAT, it went through a lot of places in your digestive tract before arriving at your stool, Okay, before it being incorporated into your stool in the large intestine, in the colon, that is why the blood from your stomach underwent a lot of changes or oxidation. Until That's why it now became color black or it, it became dark colored. Because of this pigment from hemoglobin, it now become, became hematin. Okay? All right, if I'm not mistaken. Ayan. That's again, melina. Lower, uh, upper GIT bleeding, black, tarry stool. Ayan. Black, again, tarry. Parang tar. Okay, not starry, ha? Tar. Tarry, okay. Next, we have hidden blood. It's bleeding unknown to the patient. That is known as occult blood. So, when you say occult, occult means hidden. Okay, so the patient doesn't know that uh, there is bleeding happening inside of his or her digestive tract. But when once you test it in the laboratory, you determine or you see that there is bleeding or nigh blood sa, sa stool. Okay? Uh, it's hidden lang because, again, occult uh, because... In specimen mismo, physical appearance pa lang niya, the color of the stool is normal, brown, okay? But inside of it, there are little amounts of blood na, okay? And that's significant pa rin because that could indicate there is bleeding here in the digestive tract, no? But it's not intense pa na bleeding, but it still needs to be addressed, okay? That is why it indicates occult blood or hidden blood. Alright, next you have increased starch in stool. That means amylorrhea, alright? Amylo. So, it means starch. And of course, uh, increased fats or lipids in stool. I've introduced that in our lecture in hay infusion, di ba? When you have increased fats or lipids in stool, that indicates or that means steatorrhea. Okay, so just some of the terms, all right? Steatorrhea. All right. Now, we go now to the fecal composition. What is you know, your stool composed of? Number one is, of course, undigested, undigested food stuff. So, like cellulose or fiber. Because these two... Uh, we don't have enzymes no, inside our body to, di to, to digest those. So, cellulose or fiber. You have sloud or like intestinal epithelium, meaning uh, cells that are, have fallen off, no, that have been removed from the surface of your intestinal epithelium, sloud. You have intestinal bacteria, of course, it's very abundant in your intestines, intestines, the good bacteria. You have GI secretions, of course, enzymes, uh, digestive enzymes that were used to digest the food that you have eaten. Bile pigments from your liver, all right? Most of this will be uh, discussed in thorough in your third year. And you have electrolytes, of course. Um, and lastly, of course, water. Okay, so these are, in a nutshell, the composition of your feces. Now, if you have parasitic diseases, especially those that affect your intestines, then, of course, they can also be uh, included in the composition of your feces. Okay, all right. Now, we go now to the gross examination, uh, starting first with... Um, as mentioned, it gives already preliminary information and the results of your gross examination or your physical examination can be used to correlate between the results of your microscopic and as well as your um, chemical. Again, the chemical analysis of feces will be in your third year, all right? Uh, but micro microscopic example, if you have 
uh, loose, diba? watery consistency of stool. What does it mean? I can see, I could probably see trophozoites no? in my stool. I could see um, other, but I could not see cysts there, diba? as mentioned. Because again, trophozoites, they like a liquid environment, fluid environment, parang watery. Okay? That is why the consistency of stool where you can see trophozoites, usually loose, loose, diarrheic, watery. Okay? All right. And the parameters that we examine are first, of course, color. Next, you have consistency. And lastly, you have odor. Ayan. So, consistent ka ba? Sana all consistent. <laughs> okay, alright. Ayan. This is something na wala siya. Charot lang. Okay, consistency. Alright, we'll start first with color. Ayan. The normal color of your stool is, of course, light brown to dark brown. And why is it color brown? Okay? This is due to the different pigments. The primary pigment is stercobilin. Alright? Followed by your urobilin, and finally you have mesobilin. Okay, so these are different pigments. Now, where do where did they come from? Okay, so I will not discuss this thoroughly, Jude guys, ha, because matiam ay mo, and this will be of bulk, no, of bulk discussion in the third year. But your stercobilin came from uh, urobilinogen. Okay, now uh, what is urobilinogen? I'm I don't know if you have heard of this already. Okay, urobilinogen. Now in your liver. Sige, I will draw. Okay. Ayan. Now, in your liver, di ba, um, you have a bilirubin. I'm not sure if you have already been, uh, you heard about this. But your bilirubin is processed in the liver. Okay. Now, the liver, di ba, it has a duct connecting to your small intestine. Okay. Ayan. Now, your bilirubin, okay, your bilirubin is also secreted into the small intestine. Now, this bilirubin is acted upon by your urobilin, uh, by your intestinal bacteria. Sorry. So again, diba, the liver secretes also bilirubin. Uh, diba, your liver secretes bile. Okay. Now, bile is uh, bile has bilirubin. Sorry. Okay. My not the buffer. So bile once it reaches small intestine, it reaches the small intestine. The intestinal bacteria there converts bilirubin to urobilinogen. Okay? Alright. And this urobilinogen is acted upon again by bacteria in the large intestine and in your intestines, uh, which now converts urobilinogen to stercobilin and also urobilin. Okay? Which now can be seen in your stool. Okay? So, in a nutshell, rough discussion lang yan ha. So, bilirubin from the liver, liver, from the liver, no? Pag masikrit ang bile, no? Bilirubin comes with the bile or it's in the bile, okay? And once they reach the small intestine, bacteria found there converts bilirubin to urobilinogen. And urobilinogen, again, further acted upon by the bacteria found in your intestines, will convert urobilinogen to stercobilin, urobilin, all right? And also a little amounts of mesobilin. And now these pigments comprise now your normal color of stool, which is light brown to dark brown. But the primary pigment, ha, primary pigment found in stool is stercobilin. Okay? Please take note. Ayan. All right. Now, for the color, we now go to the different abnormal color and what are the possible pathologic and non-pathologic causes of that. So, first is, of course, yellow. Ayan. By cold play, charot. Yellow. Non-pathologic is, of course, milk diet, cornmeal, starchy food, and santonin. So, it's more on food. All right? Milk diet, especially for infants, mga babies, di ba? Kabantay mo. If you have babies at home or usually after they feed milk, from the mother, their, the color of their stool is usually yellow. It's because of the milk. Okay, all right. And for pathologic cause, meaning um, an infection is happening, amelorrhea, again, as mentioned, amelorrhea, uh, this is increased starch in, in your stool, which could indicate that there's a problem with the pancreas because the pancreas did not secrete any enzymes or little enzyme to, di to digest starch. Okay, all right. Or unchanged bilirubin. Ayan. So bilirubin, the as mentioned, Bilirubin in itself is a yellow pigment. Color yellow na siya. So it's really yellow. Okay, so if the bilirubin has not been changed to urobilinogen, so of course, it imparts the color yellow. Alright, now for next color, green. Again, as you can see, non-pathologic. If, if you'll notice, the non-pathologic causes are usually from the ingestion of food, of different food, especially those food that contains pigments. Okay, alright, so we have spinach, Cooked green vegetables and calomel, which is, I think, a type of drug, yeah, or medication. And for pathologic, unchanged biliverdine. So, bilirubin is a uh, biliverdine is another oxidation product of bilirubin. So, 
If it's not converted further, the believer dean, so it imparts the color green. Okay, so again, that could indicate there's a problem with the liver, there's a problem with the um, bile duct, whatever. Okay, all right. And black artery, as mentioned, um, for non-pathologic, it could be after the ingestion of iron, bismuth, charcoal, black, blackberries, and huckleberries. So iron or bismuth, again, these are medications, no? Charcoal, I don't know why you eat charcoal, but maybe, again, some medications have charcoal, okay? Blackberries, huckleberries, of course, these type of berries can impart a black color in your stool. But again, if pathologic, what is that? Upper or lower GIT? Upper GIT bleeding, also known as your melina. Ayan, please take note. So, upper melina. How did I remember? I think upper melina, lower hematochesia. Parang ganun. Or, I remember it as hematochesia. So, we say hematochesia. So, it's like really referring to blood. No, na bright. Okay, hematochesia. So that is why lower uh, hematochesia, bright red color, okay, because of fresh blood, okay, hematochesia. That's why hemato, like really pertaining to blood, ayan. Whereas ko melina, black, so <laughs> upper, ayan, so parang ganun. Okay, so you can have your own mnemonics, guys, so I'm just helping you. Pero if you don't want my mnemonics, walang, walang namugos, okay, <laughs> alright, ayan. Next, abnormal color, you have red, of course, bright red. Non-pathologic causes if you eat beets or tomatoes. And of course, pathologic causes lower GIT bleeding, hemorrhoids or almoranas in Visaya, and carcinoma. Could be colon, colon carcinoma. Clay, tan, or putty. Uh, Non-pathologic is caused by barium. Uh, mga radiologic tests na iba na ipatake ang barium. No? And ang very pathologic is absence of bile, obstructive jaundice. Now, let's go back to this drawing. Now, Let's say obstructive jaundice, it means no in the bile duct, this is the bile duct, there is example a gallstone, all right, or like something that is obstructing, no, obstructing the, the, the duct. Okay. So what happens? Since there's already an obstruction, the bile, all right, from the liver, okay, cannot go into the intestine. Hence, there's no bilirubin to change, uh, there's no bilirubin by to change by the bacteria to urobilinogen. And if there's no urobilinogen, there is no stercobilin and urobilin. That is why your stool color is loose pad, clay. It does not look brown, okay? Because wala pigments, okay? There are no pigments uh, that can give the stool the normal color because of obstruction, obstructive uh, or obstruction in the bile duct. Could maybe a gallstone or other, other cause, all right? Okay, that's clay, tan, or body. That is why it's very important to look at the color. Okay, so if you notice these types of color, then you can already have an idea as to what, again, the possible intestinal disease uh, the patient may have. Not only parasitic, diba? Pwede ding very um, other diseases, uh, other intestinal diseases. Okay, all right. And next, you have dark red or chocolate brown. Of course, after eating uh, coffee, cocoa, chocolate, and increased red meat diet. And for pathologic, may also indicate bleeding. All right, okay, ayan. Now, for the next part, ah, excuse me. Next part of gross examination is your consistency. So, na, are you all consistent ba? <laughs> consistent ka ba? <laughs> okay. All right. Ayan. So, for consistency, the normal consistency is soft to form. So, when you say consistency is, how, is, how does it look? No, like, in terms of its state of matter, is it solid? Is it liquid ba? No? So, it's usually solid liquid. Wala man po gas siguro na, na stool, no? But the normal is soft to formed. Ayan. And abnormal consistencies, we have a lot. Soft, watery, mucoid, extremely hard, small caliber, uh, ribbon-like or flattened, large caliber. You have also gaseous or fermentative. All right, so we'll go through each of that individually. And in, in our class in parasitology, it's important to know uh, consistency, diba? Why? Because again, as I've mentioned in the previous nato na chika, we can already know what type of parasite or morphologic forms can be seen. Example, if you have a loose or diarrheic stool, meaning it's liquid, diba? So you can expect to see throp trophozoites, possibly. If formed, diba? If formed ang stool, meaning medyo gahi, you can, for, you can see mga cysts, diba? Because the cysts are much more, um, they are harder, diba? And helminth, eggs, and larva, any type of consistency, diba? But they are hardly seen in liquid or mga watery na consistency. They usually still like mga solid form, semi-form, okay? All right. 
Okay, all right. So we'll now continue with the different consistencies. So we'll start first with the normal, no? Different descriptions, no? <laughs> to describe your consistency. So we'll start first um, with cannot be punctured with an applicator stick. So in our specimen, the specimen cup, I have already let you seen the uh, the type of uh, the, the specimen cup that we use for stool, diba? So there palang pag open natin, we use an applicator stick. It's like a toothpick, but it's much bigger. Okay, all right. Applicator stick or yeah, toothpick. And then if it cannot be punctured, the stool cannot be punctured, then we describe that as hard. Okay, all right. Next one is it maintains shape, and then it can be cut by the applicator stick, even if. Um, we cut the stool with the applicator stick. It maintains its shape, okay? Meaning it's really, um, it's really, the shape is there, okay? All right. So that, uh, that is formed, okay? And the bottom side flattens in the, core, uh, the container, meaning the stool, the, the stool sample, no? Its bottom side flattens in the container, okay? That is uh, described as semi-formed. And last, the next is, it can be cut along with an applicator stick, the eye. This is your soft. Uh, sorry, for form, the eye, it can be punctured with the applicator stick. Okay, all right. But if it can be cut with the applicator stick, then that is soft. Okay, and that, those in green are the normal consistency. Okay, or the normal uh, yeah, consistency that we usually encounter. Okay, all right. But there's also, can be reshaped with an applicator stick, meaning... Uh, you can drag this, this tool to the container or it can be reshaped, then that's known as mushy, okay? Uh, the stool takes the shape of the container. So example, the container is round, so the stool, the stool also is, uh, you know, taking the shape of the container. So the stool is also round in appearance. So then that's known as loose, all right? Uh, and the stool can flow slowly only outside of the container. That is known as diarrheic. And lastly, the stool will flow out freely like water. Then, of course, that's termed as watery. Okay? So, please uh, memorize uh, or familiarize, guys, because, again, these are the words that we use to describe our stool specimens when, before we examine them under the microscope, okay, in our laboratory class. Okay? So, before we, before we uh, make smears, which is our next activity, uh, make smears from the stool, we first describe their consistency, okay? And color, all right? Ayan, so, uh, actually, uh, it's quite subjective, no? The color and consistency, it's all up to you on how you describe it, okay? So, it's subjective, all right? Another way to describe consistency is also using the Bristol stool chart, but in our laboratory class and also in your practice as med tech, we don't use this uh, to describe consistency, we use the previous one. But again, that would depend on your laboratory. But as I've experienced, we, we did not use Bristol stool chart. <laughs> okay, it's only just a guide, Siguro, to you on how to uh, describe or on its appearance based on the Bristol stool chart. But in practice and in your internship, in our lab class, we describe consistency of the, school, of the stool, school, of the stool uh, based on the previous slide. Okay, using the words there, hard, semi-form, form. Okay. For Bristol stool chart, we have different types. Type 1, you have uh, this one. Ayan. So separate hard lumps like nuts. Okay, so type 1. Type 2, you have sausage shaped but lumpy. So it has different lumps on its surface. Type 3 is like a sausage but with cracks on the surface. So may mga ginag may cracks. Type 4 is like a sausage or snake but it's smooth and soft. Okay. Type 5 is soft blobs with clear-cut edges. I like to describe it more like nor cubes. <laughs> okay. All right. yeah. Type 6 is fluffy pieces with rugged edges, so mushy stool. And type 7 is watery, no solid pieces, and it's entirely liquid. Ayan. So, diba? Welcome to MedTech! Ayan. So, where you describe your stool in detail. <laughs> All right. Like, asa yung bias? <laughs> Sino bias nyo, guys? <laughs> type 1 or... <laughs> parang gusto ko mga ano, ano, type 3 kasi sausage. Tapos may mga cracks konti. Char! <laughs> okay, alright. Or type 5 ng Ragnar Cubes. But anyway, again, <laughs> that's the Bristol stool chart. Okay, but in practice, in our class, in wherever, usually, pag describe sa consistency, what we use to describe consistency is the words from the previous slide. Okay? Yung hard, semi-form, form. Okay? All right. Ayan. Now, we go now to the abnormal consistency. Okay? We'll start first with soft watery. All right? And the cause is, could, could be diarrhea or GIT 
irritation. Now, there are specific uh, types. You have rice water. Ayan. So, rice water appearance. So, when you say rice water, it, look la it's, it looks like the water. Kanang, if nakatry mong panglungag, no? If you tried cooking rice, di ba? Once you clean it, the water that you drain from cleaning the rice. Yes, that's the appearance. Rice water. And it's characteristic of cholera. Ayan. That's cholera as a uh, disease. Okay? And you have pea soup. Like, look, looks like a soup. Murag mungo na, mungos na appearance. Or pea. Murag pea soup. Parang orange-like ang appearance niya. That is caused by typhoid fever. Okay? Please take note. Rice water, cholera. Uh, typhoid fever, pea soup. Okay, P soup, P S typhoid fever. Ayan so mnemonic. P S typhoid fever, and then R W or rice water, cholera. Okay, all right. Ayan extremely hard or skibalos, or also described as goat droppings. Ayan so I know you've already seen like how uh, the 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 feces or the stool of a goat, the stools of a goat. So yeah, goat droppings that's caused by prolonged uh, constipation. Spastic colitis or atony of the colon. When we say atony of the colon, uh, your muscles in the colon have already become rigid. Okay, they will not function anymore, or they have lost their function. All right, so extremely hard or skibalos. Next, you have ribbon-like. Ayan, ribbon-like. So ribbon-like, like that na stool. Okay, or flattened, flattened ang stool. All right, that means you have an obstruction, pipe stem. So pipe stem. Uh, obstruction of the lower colon, syphilis, ulcers, and tumors. Okay, so uh, that could be the possible uh, causes of that. All right, okay. Ribbon-like, ribbon. It's like very thin, very thin like that. Yeah, I'm not good with drawing, guys. Sorry naman. All right, okay. So again, obstruction of the colon, lower colon. Next, you have mucoid. By the name itself, mucoid, a lot of mucus. Murag mga sip-on, sip-on. Maybe amoebiasis. Dysentery or inflammation of the colon. Small caliber, like small diameter, like this mga parang ganun. Okay, ayan. Small caliber that is caused by or found in spasms. So spasms, so mag, uh, mag spasms, okay, imuhang colon. Due to hemorrhoids, cancer, and maybe also ulcers. Alright, okay. Large caliber, much bigger than this. Constipation, uh, seen among children with Hirschsprung's disease. Okay, so that's a type of that's a disease in the intestine, all right, and seen in children, all right. And next is, of course, gaseous or fermentative, meaning there's a lot of gas, no? So, pag, pag kalibang ni mo, or like, uh, the smell of the stool also, it, it smells like very sour, okay, or there could be a lot of gas, then that could be due to uh, increased carbohydrate fermentation, okay? Seen in patients with, again, maybe um, lactose intolerance, example, or like na eye problem with carbohydrate um, carbohydrate malabsorption in a way. All right, okay. And soft and mushy ang appearance. All right. And the last parameter for your gross examination is odor. But this is not usually reported, okay? We just examine or we just note, okay? But we don't report in the result of your, of your specimen or of your examination. We don't include odor. Usually, it's only color and consistency. All right? Okay. So normal odor is peculiarly offensive, so baho jutsha, but it's not extremely foul. So it's it's smelly, but it's not that offense. It's not that bad smelling. Okay, like you can tolerate it by Taylor Swift, charot. Okay, all right. And the substance says conferring odor uh, to yeah the normal odor of stool. Number one is your butyric acid, indole and scatol. So if you're very itchy, you're very scatol, charot. Mga bigaon jan, joke na. Okay. So um, butyric acid. I'm I don't know if naka experience mo sa org chem ninyo. Laboratory handling butyric acid. Butyric acid smells like stool. Okay, all right. So, very important that you don't open that in a closed space, de ba ang butyric acid? You need to go outside because of the smell. All right. So, yes, of course. So, butyric acid smells like stool, and yes, it can also be found in your stool. That is why it smells like stool. Okay. <laughs> all right, butyric acid. So these are the odors. All right. Uh, the substances that confer the normal odor of your stool. And some of the abnormal, you have extremely foul, like baho juga ayo, no? Like it's really, really smelly, like you can't tolerate it. Uh, it could be due to amoebic dysentery, cancer of the intestines, or putrefaction. When I say putrefaction, nag slowly die, your tissues are slowly dying, they're slowly drying up, okay? Putrefaction, okay? So it could be due to cancer or other um, malignant diseases in your intestines, okay? 
Putrid, um, necrosis, hemorrhage, or malignancy. So, putrid is like, parang smells patay yata. Alright, necrosis, hemorrhage, or malignancy. Or like, iron smell, parang angso. No, like the smell of urine ba? Like, nana, putrid. Okay, alright. Alright. And lastly, or sour, rancid, it's due to hyperacidity, gas formation, and unabsorbed fats. Because again, of too much acid and the presence of fats. So, you smell like sour, aslum, okay, or rancid. All right. Okay. So basically, guys, that's the end <laughs> of our short lecture lang on gross examination. Okay. So again, why do we discuss this? Because it's important no, that we know how to describe our stool specimens. Uh, again, we're after, especially for the color and consistency, because we report that no, that's included in the results in the paper no, of your um, fecalysis or stool examination even in parasites, uh, especially for parasite examination. So that's included, all right, in fecalysis, the color and consistency of your stool. And because of uh, gross, gross examination pa lang, you can already have a preliminary, presumptive idea as to what the patient is experiencing, as to what are the possible uh, parasites that, can, that are causing this, okay? All right, and it's really a, a wide variety of diseases that you can see, okay? So, Gross examination pa lang, all right? Uh, you can already see parasitic diseases and aside from that, other intestinal disorders, okay? That's why it's important that we discuss this, all right? So this is the first part of our lecture muna, <laughs> our first part of our activity in this week. The second activity, the second lecture that we're going to do is the preparation again of smears, all right? So we now make smears out of your stool, all right? Okay, <laughs> and that is the bulk of fecalysis good. All right, how you make smears out of your stool specimen and then examine under the microscope. All right, so that's all for this lecture, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening. If you have any questions, as, as always, feel free to chat in, my, in our GC and our group. All right, and I'll see you on the next pre-recorded lecture. Keep safe, guys, and God bless. <laughs>